Hi, we're here today with Dave from Mates Home Services. Hi, Dave. Hi, how you doing, Amy? Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about installing or replacing heating and cooling systems. And I know that you have a lot to get into because it's so important. The installation, first of all, is probably the most important component of this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a very important to, to do your homework on when it's ready to replace uh, or install a new heating and cooling system in your home. 60% um, of your energy costs are devoted to heating and, and cooling your home. So it's wow. important to do it, do it right the first time. Mm -hmm. So in the next coming weeks, what kind of um, systems are we going to be getting into? Yeah, we're going to talk um, the, the next uh, few weeks in the show on, on, on what's the best energy source for me from a consumer standpoint. Okay. Uh, because we get asked questions all the time, uh, uh, that very same question. And we do, we're going to take you through an evaluation process that we go through and we're going to talk about what I consider to be the convenient energy, energy sources. And that is um, uh, gas, oil, uh, solar and electric. Today, uh, yeah, we're going to have a, uh, a solar project that uh, we are undertaking in this building. Okay. And um, well, we'd be happy to take you through the, the, the process that we use to evaluate and actually do the installation. So here's where the fun begins. Dave's going to walk us through all of this. Okay. So well, where do we start? <laughs> well, we, we'll start with the solar part, and this here's the pump station. What we have here is a pump that's going to move this solution up these pipes and these exit out through the roof and go to our solar collectors. So our next step here is we're going to fill these with solution here, and this pump's going to move the solution up through the collectors, back down through all this piping here, and it's going to end up in this tank over here. Okay. All right, this is, the, uh, this is our thermal storage area because sun doesn't shine all the time. And we can't predict that, so okay. we, uh, we make uh, hay when the sun shines, and that's what we do the Wonderful. same thing with solar. Uh, we're going to make as much thermal energy as we can when the sun is out, and we're going to store it in this tank whether we need it or not. What does all of this do? Well, this here is when we absolutely run out of our stored thermal okay. energy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we need to go and heat from another source. Uh, so this is a gas condensing boiler mm -hmm. and uh, we have it tied in via these pumps and pipes back into this tank here and then from this tank it's going to take it up via the pipes again and it's going to heat this building. Wow. So we have a gas condensing boiler, uh, we have a gas piping that's run into it and this is our flue vent piping and that takes it out through the roof. Through the roof. Now mm -hmm. are you finding that it's becoming more popular again to use a solar system? Oh, absolutely, especially with the incentives. The federal government is really is making a push to go with clean energy. Absolutely. Uh, solar is part of that, that, uh, that piece of the pie, so to speak. What kind of difference are you going to see monthly in your bill if you switch to solar? Are you going to see a big difference in your well, savings? Well, the beauty of solar is it's free. So, yeah, you know, well, there the, you go. <laughs> the, the, the energy to, to run a solar system, if there's enough uh, solar energy out there, is going to be just the cost to run that pump. And that pump That's is cool. like running a 30 watt light bulb continuously. So that's all it's going to cost you for heating your home. And what kind of maintenance do you need with this system? Well, there's two separate systems. So on the gas, you want to have it, you know, checked on a, on a regular basis. All right. Uh, on your solar system, uh, you know, we have, there's any free solution that we'll be putting in here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want to test that maybe every couple years to make sure that it isn't breaking down or degrading in any, in, in any fashion. That's not bad at all. No, not, not at all. And you want to put a good uh, uh, solution in there because it's going to be, you know, uh, uh, stagnant or still over mm -hmm. over nights when there's no sun shining and it's sub-zero weather out there. So you don't want anything freezing. So you want to make sure you have a good solution system in there. So Dave, this this is basically done, right? The installation. It is, except for filling it up with some uh, antifreeze solution. Okay. So are you going to so, do a demo of that for us? Oh, okay, we'll get, we'll get on it right now. We'll, we'll button this up today. Okay, let me All get right. out of your way so Great. you can do okay. that. Well, we have a pump here. We're going to roll this pump into place. All right. And then we're going to connect some hoses up. So here's our, our pumping fitting. This is going to be uh, taking it out. And this is going to be where we're going to pump it into. So we're going to take this hose and connect it up to the outlet of this pump. And then we have uh, our antifreeze over here. Now this has to be mixed in a 50% solution with water. So similar to what you, how would you put it in your car, and this is a propylene glycol solution, so it's, uh, it's environmentally safe. First of all, what we have to do is calculate the amount of solution it's going to take in the system. So we calculate it out to be five gallons. 
So we know a five gallon bucket's gonna handle it. And we'll put two and a half gallons in there. We have two and a half gallons of water in there. So we'll just like pour this in here. And that looks like that's about it. And then we're gonna take our, uh, our plug. We're gonna plug our pump in over there. Take our hose and we're gonna suck the water out of there. Put the water back into here. Okay, so we're ready to go, and now I'm just going to turn the pump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now the pump's running, and we're pumping the solution through the system. Uh, it's pushing the air out of it, as you can hear, mm -hmm. and uh, returning it back to the bucket, and so we're, we're recycling it through. It's like flushing it, or. Exactly, yeah, and uh, seems like everything's good, now we're through. Excellent. Now we get to go up on the roof, which I'm really nervous about, but <laughs> excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, the ladder tied down for you, and it's very safe. So Nice. Okay. okay, good. So here we are up on the roof, and it is a gorgeous day. Hi, welcome back to At Home Experts. Dave from Mates Home Services showed us the first half of an installation on a home or in this case business solar system. Now while I was worried about getting up on the roof in the height, that wasn't the problem. It was the heat. It was hot. So here we are up on the roof and it is a gorgeous day which is probably great for capturing the solar energy. Dave, tell us what we're looking at here. It looks very cool, high tech. Okay, well what we have here is uh, a 90 tube collector. Okay. All right, uh, solar collector, they're evacuated tubes. Now, what were your considerations when you decided to put this here? Well, there's uh, plenty of things you, uh, you, have, to, you have to consider. Uh, number one, of course, uh, you want to have uh, the, the greatest amount of sun exposure. Of course, yeah. And we so, have it. <laughs> and we have it, we have it today. Okay. So you need uh, south uh, exposure, all right, so it gets the, the greatest amount of the angle of the sun. That's number one. Uh, number two, you don't want to have any type of uh, obstructions to the sun. What about if it's a cloudy day? I mean, because you've got all the other obstructions out of the way, but what if you have a cloudy day? Are you still going to capture the same amount of solar energy? Uh, absolutely, up to a certain point. Uh, okay. You'd be surprised at the amount of, uh, if you've ever been uh, uh, down at the beach and it's been an overcast, hazy day and you come mm -hmm. back with a, a pretty red Burn. skin, <laughs> uh, you know that there's still some good uh, UV energy out there. and. Uh, the same thing with these here uh, uh, new collectors uh, and the technology that they employ. They're able to capture a lot of solar energy even on a hazy, cloudy day. Not to the same degree as if it's on a perfectly clear sky. Okay. All right, but it's going to help out a lot. The, the only thing that you won't see is, of course, if it's uh, 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 raining or anything like that, or real dark clouds, and, and there just isn't any type of solar energy left. Now, yeah. what, are, what are we going to be doing? Yeah. We're kind of on the end of the installation here. We've okay. already put our framework up. Uh, let's uh, finish off the installation. I can uh, ask George to help us out uh, with that. Perfect. See, is this heavy? Oh no, it's really light. Wow, what is this made of? Well, actually, I have one right here I can show you. I'm sure you've seen flat panel, flat panel displays before, solar yes. collectors. Uh, this is a newer technology. It's uh, evacuated tubes, similar to like a what do you think of it like a, a fluorescent bulb? There's a round tube that uh, is double walled. Just of glass? Yes, okay. it's just glass. And then they pull a vacuum inside the tube. And the vacuum acts as an insulator. So these become very effective even during the winter months because whatever heat that's generated inside this tube is not going to be lost to the outside elements. That's pretty interesting. OK, let's see, George, what are we going to do? It'll be easy to put in. So we take the tube, we stick it in the header, and then oh, we clip there. it at the bottom. I'm going to take a spin here. Okay. <laughs> it's as easy as that. Not too bad. <laughs> so now tell us what happens once all of this is happening, because I see some things here that go back into a system with the pipes. That's what we have. Okay. We have them connected with, with pipes. Okay. We have a, a solution uh, that's, that's going to be piped through them, an antifreeze solution, and then that gets piped down into the, uh, the solar tank that we saw downstairs. 
Wonderful. Why don't you take us around back so we can see how that system goes down into the building? Okay, let's do that. So Amy, uh, back here we have the, uh, the pipes that are leading up from the, uh, the equipment that we saw downstairs. So we have a pump down there that's going to pump it up, feed it up through one end of the collector. It's going to come through the headers, uh, give off the heat that we've seen uh, with those collectors, the collector tubes, right through here and back and around and back downstairs. Oh, and back down this one. Oh, that's exactly. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And we have it insulated. Uh, we have uh, some wiring in here that has a sensor so we can actually uh, turn the pump on and off downstairs based on the temperature output. So, for instance, if it's uh, a day where it's very cloudy and we're not generating enough heat, we don't want to pump the heat that's in our tank that you saw downstairs yes. back up to these collectors and lose it. We want to turn that pump off. So that sensor is going to tell that pump when to turn off and turn on based on whether it's hot or cold or cloudy or not. Now being fully exposed like this, what's the maintenance to, to keep these? Well, it's really not. Uh, as you can see, we have them tied down to some really heavy timbers here, so they're not going to blow away. They're the, the round tubes, so air is going to blow through them. So, okay. uh, you know, we're, we're relatively good with that. Uh, they've been exposed to some pretty heavy hail already. Um, and we haven't had any issues with those. And what do you think the, the longevity of this is? Like, what is the lifeline of having this kind of system? Well, we've had tubes, and uh, not me personally, but in the industry has, has, has had uh, tubes installed since they were popular back in the 70s. So that's, that's, that's a 40 year lifespan. Exactly. We have a okay. lot of uh, warranties that are on, on these things of at least 25 years. Thank you, this was great. And now we're gonna get off this hot roof we're getting tanned as we're staying here. Now for our special segment, Mate's Green Tip of the Day. Amy, how, how long does it take for you to get hot water to your shower in the morning? Wow, it could take five to 10 minutes at least. Okay, this hot water recirculation pump will eliminate that weight and also eliminate all those gallons of water that go down the drain, waiting for the water to get hot. So you're telling me when I turn on my hot water, it's actually going to come out hot water? It's going I... to come out hot water, yes. This could go in any house, okay, that doesn't already have a recirculation line when the house was built. Okay. Um, so we install the pump mm -hmm. on top of the water heater, and then we go to the furthest bathroom sink in the house, furthest away from the pump, and we install the comfort valve, and then we set the time. You take a oh, shower right. at 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. say, we turn this on at about 5.45, but this will uh, make sure that when you turn that shower on at six o'clock, you'll have hot water right there. It'll be recirculating through this valve mm -hmm. underneath the bathroom sink. This is called the comfort valve. So it'll use the cold water return line to the water heater as the recirculation line. But is it expensive to run? It seems like- No, it's, it's about the cost of a 25 watt light bulb to run for the year. So it's, it's, it's real cost effective. Mm -hmm. There's a timer, so you can set it for the morning. Do you have if, to set the timer in order for it to come on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you, it doesn't make any sense for most homes to have constant recirculation. So right. if you know the times that you're gonna take a shower, you're gonna use the dishwasher at night, mm -hmm. give the kids a bath, you can turn this on before that. Yeah, I do love this, and I do want this, yeah. <laughs> because I am tired of waiting and wasting all the water. Mate's green tip of the day.